Mighty are the works of your hands. Yes. yes. God, I thank you. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name, God. Yes. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for this time, God. Thank you, Lord God, for being in the midst of us, Lord God. Have your way today, Lord God. Be glorified. Touch the hearts of your people, God. We decrease that you would increase. May the servants count for all eternity. Yes. And we thank you because you're the only true and living God, and there's none beside you. So, God, we honor you today just for who you are, God. We thank you for blessing us, Lord God. We thank you for calling us for such a time as this. Yes. So, God, allow us to see what you want us to see. Allow us to say what you've caused us to say, God, that it may bring honor and glory to you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Good morning again. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. And just keep hearing mighty are the works of your hands. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Mighty Amen. are the works of your hands. Right. Mighty are the works of your hands. Hallelujah. Miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. Yes. Glory to God. Mighty are the works of your hands. Yes.
and an adjustment is hard. Right. <laughs> because adjustment means that I'm willing to um, make a change in him or change in my direction in order to fulfill the purpose and the plan. That means I'm changing me, per se, but I'm going to change the direction or the, or the, or the uh, 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 way that I do something in order for us to get on the same page. Uh, it's, a, it's a compromise, if you will. Amen? Sometimes you got to compromise what you would want to do and for the sake of the relationship. Because at the end of the day, it's about the relationship, right? And God gets glory out of the relationship, and then he's going to get glory out of you. Mm -hmm. Because once you, you decide, God, I'm going to do it your way, right? When we come in a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can't be your way all way, Right? Because he's going to take him out of the picture. Yeah. He's no longer in the picture when it's all about you. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So you have to. You have to make changes and make adjustments mm -hmm. to come in alignment with what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, so when you think about, and add on to what you're saying, adjustment, it's like you're trying to make something fit. Mm -hmm. Trying to make it connect. And so, you know, and which means you have to adapt. That's good. You got it down. And so you now begin to look at that thing. So as we adjust, even life requires adjustment. It requires change. And so as, as you adjust things and you try to make adjustments in your relationship to make it fit, because the Bible said every joint supply, every joint fit together. Mm -hmm. And so even how God constructed our bodies, mm -hmm. you know, the bones and everything, the tendons, the ligaments, everything fits together. And so as we strive to do that in, in our relationship, because the Bible says that in Ephesians, be endeavoring to keep the unity of the, and the bond of peace, make every, every effort. So it's, it's adapting, you know, it's also going to require some flex, um, flexibility. Yes. Amen. And that's the thing yeah. that we have to be concerned about. So now, in other words, I have to be willing to make changes. I have to be willing or let me give you a definition of flexibility. Having the ability to be, to be easily or be able to bend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in other words, everything not going to always go your way. That's right. That's right. Especially in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So now, I should be able to easily be bendable. Mm -hmm. So in other words, so we think about I'm going to stand up and she's standing. So now, if I bend towards my wife, I know she loved that, didn't she? What I have actually just done, I have bestowed on upon her. Because what the Bible said, Judah said, if I'm your Lord, where is my honor? So now, let me give you a scripture. <laughs> Listen to me, it says here. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 said, It is not good, it is not self seeking. What? Love. Mm -hmm. So, in order for you to make adjustments to be flexible, you can't think about yourself. That's right. It can't be about you. Mm -hmm. It has to be about the other person. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to say, it is not provoked nor overly sensitive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. How many of us are very sensitive when it comes to relationships? My way. Mm -hmm. Why we have to do it this way? Right. Why can't it be my way? I want my way, what I want it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have our feelings on our shoulders. Yeah. Very sensitive. And the slightest thing would just tick us off. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So now, if I honor her, and then she honors me, and then none of us would feel like, well, I'll actually, we begin to meet each other's needs. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible said that we are to prefer the other mm -hmm. right. over yourself. <coughs> 
Amen. And even as you think about, I was thinking about, uh, as he was talking, thinking about adjusting as it relates to just the seasons of our relationships. Like our relationships go through different seasons. Mm -hmm. You know, I have really good <clears throat> friends that some of us are very, very close now. We were really close at one point. Season change, and has other things going on in their life. We kind of lost a little space of time, but we've come back into a place now where we're close. Mm -hmm. Friendships and relationships go through seasons. Right. Right? So you got to know what season you're in in order to make those adjustments with those people, Amen. with your spouse. It's just like it's winter time, right? Uh, but we're confused with the season because it don't feel like it's winter time. It's true. Right? right? True. But if it's in, the, it's in the dead of the summer, it's 90 degree weather outside, and you walk around with a fur coat on, you got your seasons confused. Right? right? And so you have to know the season that you're in in your relationship in order to know how I need to adjust at this particular time with my spouse. Where is my spouse now? Now that you've turned 50, there's a difference in how you're thinking, how you're acting, how you're responding, what you want to do now. You know, there's differences that happen with different seasons uh, of a person's life. And if you're in a marriage relationship, or a dating relationship, or just friendship, you got to know where they are. That takes time to be able to, to, to observe, to, to study, to learn who, what's going on with them and not make assumptions on the basis of how you are. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. Because sometimes the way we feel about a thing is not necessarily the way they feel about a thing. That's right. Right? That's and because they don't feel that way about it doesn't mean it's wrong. Right. Just means they don't feel that way because they're not in the space I'm in right now. Right. right? And what happens? Friendships and people break up in friendships or stop having, uh, stop uh, interacting and having good relationships because they don't understand the seasons that they're going in and out of. We change. Yeah. Amen. Right? We change. And the older you get, every year you, you want something different. Yes. Right? Yes. right? Come on, women, let's talk about it in here. Every year, something different. Is changing about you, yes, right. right? And the same with men. As they get older, as oh, yes, things change, things that they once wanted are not so much what they want. They want different right. things, right. right? You adjust with the changes and the seasons that you're in. Your marriage may be in a different, your relationship may be in a different seasons based on where you are. Maybe financially. Come on, you may be in a different different place. You may be in a different place spiritually, emotionally with each other. Come on, it's a difference. So you learn how to make the adjustments. Right? That's why you take your car in. That's right. Right, for maintenance. Mm -hmm. They have to make adjustments yeah. every now and again. Have you been, have you been, have you been to a chiropractor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every now and again, you need to go and have them to do the adjustment right. yeah. to realign some things right. so that the pain in your back won't be there. Mm -hmm. Come on, the, the tenderness you feel in your neck. Mm -hmm. Right? So there's adjustment that happens. And the word of God is the adjuster. Yes. Yes. The word of God is the adjuster. And as long as we stay focused on the word of God, it is the adjuster that we need to keep us in right alignment with what God wants for the man. Amen. 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 It's interesting you said adjuster. So, you know, if you think about insurance companies, you know, they have an adjuster. An adjuster has to make a claim. Another way the adjuster can make the proper claim, that's where you can get the benefit. So now, in order for us to get the benefit, we got to go to the adjuster, which is the word of God, as she mentioned earlier. Amen. That way we can benefit. You know, what, what I need for us to really understand, God has made this. Mm -hmm. It's in black and white. Mm -hmm. But what we try to do, we want to come up our own way. We don't believe it's, it's that easy. We want to put color to it. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Come we want to color in the white spots. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You, you know how you draw? The pastor said that. You know how you draw? And you have, a, like you have uh, 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 letters, and then you go back and you draw in the, the, uh, the spaces in between those letters, like the word zero, uh, like a zero, or, or two, or three, or whatever, and you want to color in the spaces, right? It takes away from the numbers. It takes right. away from the letters. You can no right. longer see the letter for coloring. Right, that's right. That's right. But if the word is in black and white, and you go in there putting color in between, you can't see the word. Because now you clouded out what the word is intended for you to for you to receive. Amen. 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 So when she says color, you put your own color in. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Everybody got their own color. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own interpretation. 
interpretation what love is. Uh -huh. So now, listen to this scripture here. 1 John chapter 3, verse 11 says, For this is the message which you believe believers have heard from the beginning of your relationship with Christ. We should unselfishly love and seek the best for one another. Amen. That's something. Amen. But what we do, we don't do that. We base it on what the other person is doing. He said we should seek the best. Think about it. If we did that in the body of Christ, nobody would go lacking. That's right. That's so true. Nobody would go lacking. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they did in the early church. The Bible said they went from house to house. Mm -hmm. They sold their possessions mm -hmm. as those, those who had need. Mm -hmm. And there was no lack among them. Mm -hmm. Because everything is in the house, it's in the body. That's right. Amen. We're Christ's eyes, we're Christ's mouth, we're Christ's hands, we're his feet. Yeah. It's in the body. Yeah. We're an extension. That's why the Bible says we're the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So we should get the love from one another. Amen. If Jesus is on the inside. Mm -hmm. So think about it. Think about why you're not seeking out the best. What's stopping you? Is it perhaps maybe you're selfish? Maybe I'm selfish. What is it? That I can't seek the best. That I have a problem seeking out the best. Even though I want the best. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see, it's not about what you want. Mm -hmm. And that's what the problem is. It's what I want. No. The Bible says that we have to unselfishly. You have to deny yourself your wants and prefer the other person over yourself. And I know that's hard. That's very hard. But if you can take yourself, if we can take ourselves out of the equation, then it won't be as hard. Amen. 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 Is it difficult, Pastor, to another person who's being difficult? Yes. In other words, when, when they're being real difficult and I'm trying to love unselfishly and I'm trying to um, give to them and, and, and be gracious to them, but they're being difficult to receive it, mm -hmm. what am I supposed to do? Keep on loving. Because the Bible says that love seeks not his own. Keep on loving. Keep on loving. Because the Bible says love seeks not his own. Mm -hmm. That's what God has shown towards us. That's right. Never stop loving us. That's right. Mm -hmm. See, if he said we can love our enemies, pray for those who despitefully use you. See, a lot of us look for a response in our love. That's good. That's good. That's good. So, I extend something to you, I respect the response back. Mm -hmm. So now, if you respect the response, is it genuine? Mm -hmm. Or you're going to hold me hostage? That's because right. I didn't respond a certain way. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Then it's coming back to, then it's about you then. Yes. It ain't about the other person. Well, you didn't respond the way I want you to respond. It's almost like I'm going to take it back. Mm -hmm. wow. Like kids, you can't play with my stuff. You can't play with my toys. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. You didn't give it to me when I want it back. Wow. The way I want it. Mm -hmm. So I can't play with you anymore. Mm -hmm. So I can't be nice to you anymore. Because mm -hmm. you're nice to me. That's right. Mm -hmm. He said it. The ungodly does that. The scripture said. So you ain't you haven't done anything. That's what they do. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. But let's go. That's what we gotta work to. You know, I believe that when you love Irregardless of what the person is doing, the person's doing, you're gonna reap love. Yes. 
When you're going to sow, if you sow, you're going to reap. When you make the investment, you'll get a return. And even though they may not act like they're receiving, you can't look at the exterior. That's right. You got to know what, you got to believe that God is working on the inside. That's right. Amen. You know, uh, you got you to gotta, you gotta focus on not looking at what you can't see. Now, it's just like walking by faith. It's really walking by faith. And you know, Jesus didn't look at where we were, what we were doing when he extended love to us. Come on. When he died on the cross, he died on the cross not looking at what we were and who we were at the time. He extended love knowing that at the right time, we would come to ourselves. And realize that we needed his love. Right? But his love was already the available for us to take it up at that point. So he didn't have to come and lay it down. It was already laid down for us. Yes. And so when we're in relationships, you lay down love for that person, in regards to whether they pick it up at that moment or not. But they will at some point in time pick it up. Because you know what? I don't, if we can really grab how powerful love is, the Bible said love, that's the only thing I've seen in Scripture. Love never fails. Never fails. Never fails. So you never will fail when you're loving. Because that's an attribute of God. Everything he does is by love. Even to the ungodly. Because he is love. Why? He can't be nothing else but love. He don't know how to be nothing but love. Come on, he don't know how to express nothing but love. He is a he is love um, personified double time, double time, double time. So nothing can defeat love. Nothing. Nothing can defeat love. If we can get that in our spirit. So when you try to love somebody who's difficult, don't take the person. You got to let them know, you're not hurting me. I'm the one extended. It's for you. See, but we take it personally. Well, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to stick my hand out anymore. I'm not going to speak. I'm not going to be cool. Then we get offended. Then we get offended. Right. Then it's become personal. Mm -hmm. Then you get in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Now you're ready to fight. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing it a time. It's over. I'm done. I'm out of here. Getting out of here. Right? Yeah. Right? Because when we do things in the flesh, what does the flesh do? The flesh reaps what? Corruption. <laughs> There's nothing good in the flesh, y'all. Come on. Come on. You know this. Come on. You don't wash it. What's it going to do? Come on now. This flesh don't smell good if you don't take care of it. All right, then. Come on now. This flesh will take you places that you did not intend to go. And it'll leave you in places you didn't need to be left. Your flesh will get you in trouble. You can't lean on what you what you feel. Come on. You can feel I feel this. No, 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 no. The, the, the feelings are on the basis of what you perceive. Yes. What you perceive drives what you feel it. Come on. You don't you nobody can make you feel any particular way. That is because of what you what you perceive. And if I perceive that you're trying to do something to hurt me, then I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have a feeling about it. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. Flesh ain't right. Flesh ain't gonna never be right. Flesh ain't gonna never be saved. That's why right. your flesh did not get saved. Come on, because if that was the case, some of us would not be in the flesh body that we in. Come on. Y'all, come on. Now, y'all know y'all waiting to get to heaven. Need you to be skinny. Come on. Come on. Get to heaven to be whatever. The not say size or whatever you want to be. Come on. Y'all know what you Come on. Flesh is not saved. <laughs> flesh ain't saved. Flesh ain't saved. And you can't put no trust in this. You can't put no faith in it. Come on. Because the Bible said, crucify the flesh. Kill it. Daily. You can't take it. You got to kill it. Kill it daily. It's anything, anything, if it says you have to kill it, that means it's dead. Now you gotta, you gotta realize, 
Yeah, you know, we try to dress the flesh up. We do. We put this on, we add this on, yeah. we stick this on, we take that <laughs> off. The flesh. The Bible said Woo. we're gonna have glorified bodies and we ain't got them now. That's right. So don't try to glorify it too much. Uh-huh. Ain't that come out of your mouth? 
My God. Because the Bible said if Jesus would have thought mm -hmm. to send his angel to his rest, if it would have entered his mind, oh, that's why the Bible said, let this mind be, be in you. you. That is there was also a Christ Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Come on. Be renewed by the renewing of God. A lot of times, that's where the struggle for me in our yes, mind. Yes. The battle is in your mind. Yes. Yes. The battle is in your mind. Yes. 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 See, 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 the reason why singles have difficulty, did you say this in a single? You have difficulty waiting. It's because you think that waiting is a denial, and it's not. And it's, and in actuality, it's not a denial, it's just preparation. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Waiting is not to deny God denying you of something. Waiting is just preparing you for something. And so you gotta think about it. If he would have given you what you desire, most of us would have cooled up. It would cool up to us. The last thing God, the last thing you ask God for, mm -hmm. if he had given it to you. Out of time. Out of time. What would it have been done to you? Think about it. Think about it. That last person. Lord, I gotta have him. Lord, why come you can't bless me with him? Lord, when you gonna give him to me? Lord, when you gonna listen, if he had really given it to you, where would you be? Right now? <laughs> See, God spares us from some things. Uh, because he knows the end. The only thing we can see is right now. Is a trick of the enemy to take out your destiny before you reach it. Oh, come on. I'm telling you, y'all, y'all better listen to me. We've been married 27 years. This ain't, we just ain't coming for the We didn't get here today. Took us a minute to get here. Amen. Going through some things. But we realized that some stuff we said out of our mouths started setting some stuff in motion. Then we had to cancel words and reject words and start speaking right. What women be careful? Let me say this to my sisters: Be careful what you are saying. You are upset to your children, to your spouse, to your whatever. Just be careful because when you speak out your mouth when you're upset. Those are the things that go and get, get start activating. Those are the things that start activating over your spouse. He ain't got nothing. He ain't this. He ain't that. He ain't got that. He, he ain't, okay, guess what's going to happen? He ain't going to never happen. But when he's not at a, he, when he's at a place where you feel like it's not happening the way you think it, you want it should be happening, that's when you go to God and you start saying what God God, he got all that I need. He's my provider. He's my head. He's the leader. He's the family. He's the my family. He's got, you know, he's got more than enough. He's a, he's a superman. He's a great man. He's a blessed man. He's an overcoming man. Come on, he's a preacher man. Come on, everything that God said. That's what you begin to start saying. You don't say what you see because what you see is temporal. Yes. Yes. So now, listen, with that being said, you, you got to realize God's still working on you. You ain't done. You not done. What did what what Isaiah say? I'm wretched and I'm undone. Undone. All day. Undone. Come on, come on. 
on, you don't want to eat no steak raw. Come on, I know some people eat that medium well. Come on, but you don't want to eat it raw. You got to put that steak in there. You got to turn it over. Come on, you got to turn it over again. Sometimes you got to put a little fork in and make sure it's getting done on the inside. Sometimes God just turning you over in the oven. He's going to want to keep on turning you over until you're done. Because you're going to fall if you don't. And if you eat anything undone, it's going to make you sick. Sick. That's why you're getting sick and tired of stuff. Because it's sick. The stuff you eat. Be connected to every person. You can't be hopping from church to church to church to church because you're eating food that ain't done. It might not be done for you. It might be done for them because that's what they're supposed to be. But you ain't supposed to be there. You're eating undone food. Okay, I'm just going to say. You don't want anything that's going to take you away from God. And contaminate what God is trying to do. Because even you know, I, I can take us when 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 we first started dating, and I you know because let me say this, I was in a relationship before my wife. I was. Some of, some of y'all may have you know heard me say that. <laughs> I was. In a and so. <laughs> The after, how you like that? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I, I was in a relationship, and of course the relationship is dissolved. And so what I had learned is that I said, okay, Lord, I'm because I, be honest with you, I chose, and I realized I made a mistake. So I said, I'm not going to do this again. I'm going to let you choose. Yes. All I'm going to do is cultivate a relationship with you. Amen. I'm going to get more involved in ministry. I'm going to cultivate a relationship with you. And so that's what I began to do. But let me say this. As I was doing that, that doesn't mean that the desire didn't leave me. Right. Right. I was still there. Right. Yes. I shift my focus. Uh -huh. I wasn't focusing on where is she? Where did she come in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw those that were coming in and out of the ministry. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't my focus. God was my focus. And shortly after, it, it wasn't a long time, here she come. It was like the Lord had unveiled her. Uh -huh. I saw her, but I didn't see her in that light until right. the proper time. Right. And God is a God of timing. You don't want anything again out of time. Yes. You not get what it's supposed. To, you you not get what you're supposed to get from me. Right. If you get it out of time. That's good. So now, as my singles, it's nothing wrong with you being in the state that you're in. Amen. Because think about it. You know how you are. You know your ways, your mannerisms. Can you really handle a relationship at this point? Because many of y'all like to come and go, do your own thing. I don't want to answer nobody. Right. Nobody asks me where I'm going, when I'm coming back. Why I'm going there. <laughs> well, that, looks, that looks nice to have somebody on your arm, but that ain't happening 24-7. No, that's right. You, what you see here 27 years, this is work. Yes. Yeah. And what you yeah. do in a job? <laughs> work. It just doesn't happen. And that's what we want to oh, We both say we both love God and oh, all of my own. It takes work. Again, one's got to be, both got to be, you got to be flexible, you got to make adjustments, you got to do all that. It's a continual process, even in your relationship with Christ. So nothing just automatically because you say you love God. And you got an enemy who doesn't want to see any of those come. To be. Yes. So now you gotta work for everything. Yes. Work out your soul salvation. Yes. Huh? Work those relationships out. Yes. Work out those differences. Those misunderstandings. Yes. Trying to understand one another. Yes. 
Sheryl and Jimmy don't think alike. That's right. That's right. Why he thinks the way he thinks. Why she thinks. Why does she look at it that way? In all things, get an understanding. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes giving up yourself. Laying down your desires. And so God looks at how we relate to one another. But he said, how can you say you love me whom you can't see and have an art against your brother and sister whom you do see? Get it right. Don't, you know, before you bring your gift to the altar. So God is concerned about relationships. Because he said, if you're going to be my followers, my disciples, y'all got to have love for one another. The two greatest commandments, love me and then love one another as you love yourself. And the beauty in that, the beauty in those two commandments is that it was tens of thousands of other commandments before he even got to them. It was tens of thousands of other commandments. God broke them down to ten when he gave them to Moses because he knew Moses couldn't handle them all. That's right. When Jesus comes on the on the scene, he says, okay, I'm going to break them down from the 10 and I'm going to give you two because I want you to follow. Two things and I got these things. If you follow these things, that comes it all. That's it. That's it. See how simple God is? That covers it. Just two things. That's all you got to do. You govern your life by. That's it. That's it. Love God. And love love people. people. Come on, that's it. Love God and love people. That's right. Huh? Yeah. So, every, so every time I hear people say, I don't like, I don't, I don't like people. I don't do people. Really? I don't do church folk. How is that? How is that? You go to work? Come on. You live with yourself. You live with yourself. You people. I You got a family. You people, yeah. come on, come on. Let's let's identify what you're talking about. Right. Yeah, right. that's the real thing. So that's why racism is of the devil. Yeah. Because now you're trying to love a certain or discredit a certain ethnic group. Yes. yes. That's not of God. Right. Mm -hmm. And think how many people are gonna miss God? Gonna oh. miss with that mindset. Yes. Because he said, God so loved the world that he gave. The world. That includes the world. everybody. No one is exempt. So if you got a, a problem with somebody, you got to realize God still loves that individual. That's right. He'll never stop loving that individual. And you can't make him stop loving that other person. An issue with them. Yeah. And you know how we do that? You know how we do? Lord, you know, we got a problem with them. We go to God. God, go get them. Fix them. Get them, Lord. You saw what they did to me. Especially when you're married. Father, get my husband. God, fix him. He need this. Lord, he need that. He need. I remember I was at prayer one time and I'm just going in on some stuff concerning my husband. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just praying. Praying up storm. God, fix him. Sanctify him. Take it all out. I'm down in there. I'm going in. Spinning tongues. I got sweaty doing it. And he stopped me in my church. He said, uh uh, shut your mouth. It's you. Put my face in the mirror. All right, now get you right. Mm -hmm. Cause what you see, and you know how God would do it. God would use your children. Uh -huh. You know, so you know you, you get on your children yeah. about certain things, and the Holy Ghost yeah. say, uh huh. And how about you as it relates to your husband? Yeah. Did you do that right today? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you repent? Right. Did you ask for forgiveness? Yeah. He will. Mm -hmm. yeah. God will use stuff. He Come will. on. Yes, uh huh. It ain't about the other person. It's about you. Come on. Sometimes, sometimes we gotta get in the mirror of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And let him see, look at, let him put the spotlight on those areas. Yes. What we do is we don't want him touching stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't want him putting his hand on places. Yeah. We want to move his hand away. 
But when he puts his hand on a thing, you better let him keep it right there because he's trying to heal it. He's trying to deal with it. He's trying to set you free from it. Come on, it's something that he's dealing with now that's, that's going to be needful in just a little while. So therefore, we don't have a right to point the finger at no one. No one. So therefore, you have to look at yourself. Take self inventory. That's right. Self inventory. So yes. once you do that, you realize I ain't got time to look at nobody else because I'm a handful in itself. Child, child, child. This like 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 little folks, child. He that with God said. because it come up in my spirit again. Some of y'all, get my young people, listen to me. Don't mess with folk that ain't done. You messing with undone folk, you gonna fall with them. Come on. Mm -hmm. Hear me. I'm telling you, don't mess with undone folk. You gotta let them get... So in other words, life should not have fell Huh? Light cannot dwell with darkness. That's why God himself won't sit when sin is happening. Yeah, that's right. He can't intermingle himself with sin. He's too holy for it. That's, right. that's why he has to turn his face from it. Yeah. Yes. Come on, y'all. I'm just saying, you got to be careful. Young people realize that the enemy is out to sift you as wheat. Because he's not talking, he's not interested in your present. He's thinking about your future. And why he doesn't know your future, he knows your future has an expected end. And because he knows that, you got to remember, he was with God. He knows the infinite, the, uh, the, the infinite, finiteness of God. Yeah. The infinity of God. Yeah. He knows the power of God. He knows the ability of God. He knows the strength of God. He knows who God is. Yeah. He knows who he is. And because he knows that, he knows that if he can absolutely sabotage your destiny, that's why he'll put up people. He'll put people in with you. That's why he'll cause people to come in your path. Your past. Come on. And he'll camouflage it like it's, it's the promise. He'll, prom he'll camouflage it like it's the one. It's the glory. It's who you gonna need. It's who you need. Look good. It'll look like it's supposed to be. Come on. Because what the Bible said, he appeared as an angel come on. of light. Come on. Yeah. Isn't that what he did when he came before God? He appeared as an angel before all the other angels. Yeah. But God recognized him. Yes. And so now he puts something on the inside. It's the Holy Spirit. Spirit of discernment. So we yes. have to recognize. This ain't all. I don't, I don't care how good you look. How good you smell. Come on. This is not God. Mm -hmm. It's not to the destiny. They might not have the ability to block it themselves. I take authority and do it myself. I already prayed for their wives. Come on, I already prayed for their wives. I'm thanking God for the holy little girls, the sanctified little girls, the ones that have kept themselves, the ones that love God, the ones that's going to love them for real. All these other little counterfeits that can keep on walking. Because I've already prayed. So I come against every demonic force, every demonic spirit. Huh? Huh? Got to. You got to. And let me say this: don't, don't, don't. Come on, single women, don't uh, uh, overlook that spilling in your gut that tells you something ain't right about that person. Yes. You ought not to be doing more work as a single woman right. while he's supposed to be courting you than he's doing for you. That's right. You the prize. Yeah. Be 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 the prize. Yeah. 
Be the prime. Be the prime. Come on. You got to have a big old, big old, come on, big bow on you. I'm the prime. And listen, while she's saying it, don't know your standards. That's right. You gotta, look, you gotta let them know I come with a price. A price. Now, are you willing to pay that price? Huh? Who was it? Um, was it Jacob? The work Who was it? Yeah. 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 All those years. Seven years. No, he worked 14. Four, 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 seven got Leah. Right. And Leah worked one in one. Right. That, let, let me say something. Listen to that, Pastor. Listen to that. Listen to that. He worked for seven years with the expectation he was going to get Leah. Right. Right. You break it. He was going to get Rachel, but he ended up getting Leah. What happened? He said, okay. I really want Rachel. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get Rachel. So he works seven more years, double what he put in the first time, to get what he wants. Guess what? Let me tell you something, young ladies. If he ain't willing to work for you, you better let him keep walking. Let him keep walking. Because any man that ain't willing to work for you, any man that ain't willing to put it down for you, lay it down, work two and three jobs, make it happen for you, come on. You always reaching in your pocket, paying the bill, come on. You always putting the money on the table. The devil is a liar. Come on now. Come on now. So, so Ain't nothing that wrong with helping out every now and again. I'm so sorry. With that being said, you shouldn't be saying, well, we is it, we is it coming. Oh. Uh -oh. He who finds. Yeah, there you go. That's it right So you shouldn't feel like, you know, something wrong with you. That's right. Something wrong with him. Come on. Come on. Come on. And the most important thing, is, is that the man, uh, if he knows what he's doing, if he's right, and he connects and understands what God is doing, he's looking for his reward. Come on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because she's a representation of me. This is my glory. That's what the Bible says. This is my glory. Christ is God's glory. As men, we're Christ's glory. Yes. And you don't want to, and that's the kind of man you want. Amen. That will glorify God. Yes. More than he glorifies you. Yes. That's right. Because if he glorifies God, you know he ain't going to pop it. Mm -hmm. You know, by me being the only boy, she, uh -huh. that's a clue. Amen. Right? That's a clue. Amen. That's a clue. Amen. Let me say something. Can I Go ahead. Let me say this. When you dating a guy, come on, young ladies. When you dating a guy, how he treats and interacts with his mother is a real good clue yes. as to how he will love and treat you. Right. If he got a good relationship with his mother, he's got good, you know, they, they have a good connection, you can best believe he gonna have a good connection with you. There could be some things he had to work through, mm -hmm. right? But he will know how to love you because he loves his mother. Because he loves your mother. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. So, with that being said, I understand that we have uh, some questions. Some questions we want to see if we can answer. Amen. 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 We're going to answer some questions. Y'all good? Yes. Y'all blessed? Yes. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Let's see. This one says, how do you get over a broken heart? Mm -hmm. Wow. How do you get over a broken heart? How do you get over a broken heart? Well, first of all, you have to discover why was your heart broken? Mm -hmm. Identify what broke your heart. And <coughs> once you identify what has broken your heart, I think it's important then to take that to the Father, take that to the Lord and say, okay, God, I might have made a mistake here. I might have messed up here. I should have been in, you know, some things may not, I should have been over in this area. Um, I need you to heal the area. Only God can heal what's broken. Only God can heal what has been shattered. Mm -hmm. Only God. Yeah, because when you say that, obviously there was some miscare somewhere. Right. So you definitely want to take it to the, the person who cares for you the most. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's because good. the Bible said, cast all your cares upon him for what he cares yes. for you. So that's good. That's the first, you know, you definitely want to do that. Take it to God. And allow him to examine it. And then identify what you were expecting. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. That allowed your heart to be broken. Wow. Identify what were you expecting? What, what, what was I really expecting? And that's good because your expectation could have been unrealistic. Mm -hmm. It could have been beyond that person's ability. Amen. Amen. To bring it to pass. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you know sometimes we put... Certain things were individual, they don't really have the ability to do that. That's, right. That's a wishful thinking on our part. So you have to take it to God, uh, identify what's, you know, the area that's been hurt, take it to the Lord, and then identify what were your expectations of that person. Right? And again, as Pastor just said, if your heart was mishandled, should I have allowed them the ability to have it? He says, some people can't handle carrying your heart. Wow. Right? Some people can't be trusted with carrying your heart. Right. That's why you got to know who you're about to make a connection with and who you get ready to come into covenant relationship with. That's why I do is important. You can't say I do to everyone. Amen. So if you understand uh, um, what I was expecting, and what, what this person wasn't capable of handling my heart, my emotions. We understand when we say heart meaning my emotions. Mm 
uh, my, my, my feelings, where I am at this particular moment. Yeah, because if I can stand at the altar and say I do and, you know, say, all, say the vows and I love you, the better for worse or what have you, and then for whatever reason things happen over the course of some time, and then I say I, I've fallen out of love with you, and then shortly after I meet someone else and I fall in love, then that wasn't really love. And you know, because if you can fall in love with somebody else just like that, with that previous individual, we really didn't mean that much. Mm -hmm. And so we, I mean, because that's all we do, we fall in and out, in and out, in and out. And really there is no such thing in the kingdom of falling in love. Mm -hmm. You either are walking in love, mm -hmm. or you are in love. Mm -hmm. There's no, I fell in, I fell out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not a kingdom principle. Right. Amen. God didn't fall in love with us. He just loved us. Right. That's right. Jesus didn't die for him just to fall. Uh -huh. He died for God. To, he's because the Bible says God so loved. Right. So be careful how we use those terms. Mm -hmm. Right? I feel out of love with him. No, you, you feel out of feeling with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's tell the truth. I don't feel that for them anymore. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right? And if your feelings are out of it, then you need to be concerned about whether or not your feelings are connecting to something you perceive. Because your perception can throw your feelings in and out of way. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because then your eyesight's going to be on. Because love involves feelings, but that's not really consistent. It's not all based on feelings. Thank you, Lord. Love is the giving of oneself without expecting anything in return. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's good. Amen. Isn't that what Jesus demonstrated? Amen. While we were yet sinners, mm -hmm. Christ died. Amen. Good. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is sex love? Why do I have to wait on love? Okay, well, let me ask this question. I'm trying to make sure. So now, is the person, let me see. is sex love? Why do I have to wait on love? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so it kind of makes me like saying, it's Do I have to wait on sex? Mm -hmm. For it to be love? Because sex is not love. Sex is an act. A-C-T. Act. So sex is not love. Right? It's an act. Right? There are expressions of love that come in the intimacy relationship. But sex is not love. Right. And that's the misconception, especially for our young people, is that young guys will say, well, if you love me, you'll have sex with me. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. No. I don't have to love you. I don't have to have sex with you to show you I love you. Mm -hmm. That's right. I can love you and show you a whole lot of other things. That's right. right. Sex is not involved. Amen. Because if it's outside of, of the marital covenant, then it's sin. Uh -huh. That's right. Is fornication because the Bible says the marriage bed is undefiled, which means it's pure mm -hmm. in the sanctity of marriage. Mm -hmm. That's the way God designed it. Mm -hmm. But we know we live in a corrupt society. Yeah. So then the question is why would God say for singles to remain sexless? Let me say it that way. If it's designed by him to be expressed in marriage. He designs it that way because he knows that you cannot contain sex in outside of the covenant of marriage because sex is like an atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, amen. Come on, y'all wrong folk in here. Amen. Amen. If you are not careful and you're exposed to it before it's time, right. It can blow up on you yeah, and take you to places that you cannot teach. handle. You talk about 
Amen. Sex is not to be played with. That's right. Young people, listen to me. No form of it until you are an adult enough to be in a married relationship that it can be expressed properly within the, con in the, the container and the confinement of marriage. Why would he put it in a confined place if it was okay for everybody to do? Right, right. So really, God did it for your protection. Yes, Our protection. Yes. yes. Especially this, the time that we live in, this is not the time to be here, there, and everywhere. Because you don't know who's who, Who's pretending to be who? Right. Who look like who? Who think they who? <laughs> no, ma'am, no, sir. So it's best to keep yourself yeah. safe. And at this particular time, I mean, it's just not just this particular time, but you got all kinds of rampant things that are out there. Yeah. Yeah. And just because the person looks clean on the inside, right. it's not the outside that's, that you gotta be concerned about. Right. It's what's on the inside that you cannot oh, see. Right. Too many, I know I've too many young people. It was my first time, yeah. right? Your first time, last time. Because guess what? You walked away with something. Yeah. Yeah. That's death by temptation. Yeah. The enemy will tempt you into places and then relief or release death upon you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm saying stay out of the sex realm until you're married. Right. That's right. Young men can do it. Yeah. Sanctify. That's right. Yeah, that's why I find all flesh spirit. Mm -hmm. Come on, not flesh spirit, but everything that is seductive and seducing. Yes. 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 So that's why you have to be mindful what you look at. Yeah, which right. allow to come into your senses, your eye, the gates of your eyes. Because the Bible says, what well, in the world is the lust of the eyes. And then that's what we have the most challenging in our eyes. It's what we look at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if that's the case, and that's what men are drawn by, what they see, the young girls, young women, keep yourself holy. Come on, they ought not to see your g string. Amen. And happy bosom. Come on, they ought not to see everything. Come on, some stuff you got to be kept for the secret. Real men, real men, real men want your stuff to be a secret for them. They don't want everybody to see it. Come on. That's just the truth. Keep it holy. Let me tell you, it's a greater benefit keeping it holy. It is a greater benefit than keeping it holy. Then being out there and, okay, because the world will tell you to take everything off. Right. Uh -huh. The world will tell you to be free and loose. You know, if you got the body, you, sh you show the body. That's what the world will tell you. I believe, I don't believe in, in covering up if you got a nice body. Do, you know, you make sure you, but you ain't got to be, all, your flesh ain't got to be at all over the place. Come on. You can show your shape and keep it together. That's right. And women, you don't want a man to want you just for that one thing. That's right. Because that after he wins with you, he's going to the next one. Because in his mind, he can always see something better. Amen. If he's not willing to make a commitment. So to answer the question, sex is not love. No. And do I need to wait on love? Yes. Yes. Yes and no. No, yes. Real love. <laughs> wait on It's worth it. Wait on it. Wait on it. Amen. Wait on it. The best thing in the world is the wait. Yes. It is. It's the hardest thing to do, but it is the best thing to do. Yes. Amen. And be of good courage, like the scripture say. Okay, we're going to ask for one last question, and we'll hold the rest of them for next week. Where our time is running out. Pastor, can you If there is discord between spouse, I'm not sure I'm going to read and sibling, how do you navigate it? Is that right? So if there's a discord between your spouse and their siblings, how do you navigate it? Uh, you stay out of it. Keep your mouth full. It ain't in your business. It's my business to care for my spouse and to pray for them. And pray that God will give them wisdom on how to navigate the family concerns. Right? No, you don't be like, do you need to tell, uh-uh, that's their family. Right? 
And at the end of the day, family is important. So you pray for them, funny, honey, and if the Lord gives you something to say to them in terms of encouraging them to do something for the family, then you say, honey, I just feel led that you might need to do this as it relates to your family. You know, I don't know, you pray about it, but I just feel like you need to do this for your family that's going to help, right? Help. Yes. Not to create discord. Right. Yes. That's not your role. Right. right? That's why we have way too many in-laws and in-laws and law outlaws. Mad at the spouse because you you getting in messy stuff. Get out of that. Get your hands out of that. Go over to another place. Take it to the Lord in prayer and let the Lord deal with the family stuff. If it's the mother and the son or the mother and the daughter that's got some issues, stay out of that. Pray. But you always encourage your spouse to do what's right. Amen. Vice versa. Amen. 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 I can be really transparent. There were some times when there was some things weren't right between me and my mom. And my husband would say, well, have you called today? Have you checked on that? Have you done this? Have you done that? And sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> but I would call anyway. Do, yeah, I would do what? Because he was encouraging me to do the right things. Right. No matter how I felt at the moment about what was going on. Right? Don't, don't get involved in sibling stuff. That's their stuff. Okay, so because that means that you're trying to, if, you, if you're thinking on those lines, then that means that means that you're trying to be the mother or, or you're trying to take the role of this, that, that person. You can't. Stay in your spot. Don't, don't muddy the waters on your road. Right? Stay in your lane. Don't do that. You support them. See, because you don't want to create more discord. You know, because the Bible said that's one of the things, six things God hates. You know, person that sows discord. So you want to try to bring unity as much as possible. Amen. 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 Y'all get something out of today? Yeah. Amen. 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 We'll finish up on next week. Yes. And we'll continue on. I do invite your friends. Come on, tell them to come on now. Uh, we'll be finishing up on next week, and I'm not sure what the Lord gonna say next week. Amen. We'll be ready. That's right. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time of gathering, Lord God. We thank you for your people, Lord God. We thank you for just their hearts being open, Lord God, to your spirit and your word, Father. Help us, Lord, as your people, Lord God, to walk in love, that we will resemble you in the earth, Lord God, that we will bring all the glory to you. We just thank you. Bring us back into this point of time. I pray your blessing will be upon your people, Lord God. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.